Hey everyone, I wanted to do um, a really quick video on some of the basic stuff. Um, I get quite a lot of questions now about setup things. Um, and if you're new to this or thinking of switching to this, there's a few things to consider. It's not quite as scary um, as maybe you've read. There's quite a lot of advice out there which I think is a bit questionable. Um, it's not quite as difficult as you might think. Um, I will admit it can be a bit expensive. Um, but just the key things to think about. I mean, firstly, if you want to keep these, you've got to think about the size of your fish tank. Um, you could do it in maybe 60 gallons. I don't know, but I mean, the rule of thumb that most people seem to go by is 10 gallons of fish. So this tank is over 500 litres, which I think is about 120 gallons. Um, and I've got, I think, 14 in here. Maybe 12. So I'm, I'm around about on that 10 gallons per fish. Um, and at that level, it's quite easy. Basically, if you're going to add more fish, you need to change more water more often. So it's really down to how much maintenance you want to do. On this particular tank, it's pretty straightforward now. Now it's settled and it's been running for about two years. Um, these get, or they were getting 100 litres of water twice a week. Measuring parameters and stuff, I'm cutting that down a bit, which makes it much easier. I don't get much algae. It's all fairly straightforward. So key things to think about, size of your tank, obviously the biggest you can get is best. More water, it's more stable, easy to look after. Um, you can have more fish. Um, but definitely, definitely think about the size of group of fish that you're going to keep too. If you want these fish, they need to be in a group. You can't keep these on their own. I don't think you can even keep these in a pair unless you're just trying to breed them. But, you know, you don't need a big tank for that. So minimum group size is a six. But obviously the more the merrier. You can see in here there's, there's some big fish that are pushing people around. Like him there. There's some little fish, that one hiding over there, he gets pushed around. Um, and there's possibly three that you could say get pushed around more than the others. Um, the more fish you've got in here, the more that aggression is spread about. These are sickly, so they can get a bit feisty. These are fairly calm at the moment. Well, there they are, those two are fine. Um, so think about that, think about the size of your tank, big as you can get. Get as many discs as, as you can, but try to stick to that 10 gallons per fish limit and that will make your life easier. If you want to go more, you're just going to have to do more maintenance and I think you'll probably have more problems. So at this level, it's actually pretty easy to look after these. I don't do much maintenance at all. As I say, I do two water changes a week. Um, I may reduce that down a bit. Um, but these fish, I think, speak for themselves. Again, I'm no expert. I'll let the fish tank speak for itself on how well the fish do. But I've certainly learnt a few things in the last two years that I think it would be good to share with people. And I think one of those is that some people will try and say, yeah, you can fit 30 fish in here. You probably can fit 30, 30 fish in here, but I don't think they'd do very well. And I think I'd be forever cleaning out stuff and changing water or whatever. So key things to remember, yeah, size of the tank, number of fish you put in it, and also account for other things like these little guys. Um, they're not just there for show. If you feed these fish, it's incredibly messy. There's chunks of food flying everywhere. They'll get most of it. But if that rots in the tank, your water's just going to go downhill fast. These dudes will get all the tiny little bits that the big fish miss. Um, and then if you look down, where are they? There's, there's one over the back there, if you can see them. There's a gang of stir by Corys. Now, they like the high temperatures. So 30 degrees, they're happy with that. They will clean the sand, turn the sand over, um, and keep that looking good too. So don't just have discus. There's some kind of support fish that I think you must have, um, and these are excellent, they won't get eaten. There's a lone cardinal tetra, he was one of a group of 20. Um, these guys ate the rest, he's the only one left, and I don't actually know how he's still there, because he could clearly fit in his mouth if he wanted to. And it's almost like they leave him alone for some reason, but I feel a bit bad for him, but yeah, he's the only one left. So. They look good with discus, they show well, but I wouldn't get them because they get eaten. Um, these guys are bigger, they're faster, 
they do an excellent job so I highly recommend those get a good group of those um, get some sturbies to start the, the, the substrates um, and you'll be doing well that's another key thing as well decide if you're going to do it planted or if you're going to do it bare bottom which is basically just glass on the floor um, and no decor some people put plants in pots but I don't think plants grow very well in pots because the water doesn't circulate properly um, I don't like the bare bottom tanks people say things like this are difficult to clean but you can see I haven't cleaned this for nine days uh, it's a bit dirty it's not too bad some of the plants have been pulled out um, there's a few bad leaves I'll get those when I do it next but you can keep the water clean enough with all these plants in here and that sand in there it's not a problem at all um, so it depends what look you want I think they love having some plant cover so if you look up there there's lily pads up there there's some frog bit there's a ton of this um, duckweed which has got in somehow um, and I keep meaning to get rid of it but actually it seems quite good and that keeps the water very clean too so um, I think the planted look certainly I prefer that I think these ones prefer it too so it's all good one thing you may want to consider when you're buying um, discus be very careful where you get them from um, I don't think I would go to a local fish shop to get discus I would find a specialist breeder and decide what you want to do if you want to buy small fish because they're cheaper that's fine but if you're going to try and grow them to a good size you really need to be changing a lot of water and feeding a lot so the amount of food going in you've got to change more water um, that will make them grow faster but that's quite hard work it's a difficult one because if you're new to it you're going to be worried about buying one of these and thinking well I can't look after that um, I think it's easier when they're bigger um, and you don't have to worry about feeding them properly to get them to grow properly. Some of these can stunt as well, which is a quite a weird phenomenon, but you can find a stunted discus that just won't grow. Um, key thing to look out for there is if the eyes are really big compared to the body, then you've got a stunted discus. The other thing to look out for is certain strains, so that there, for example, is what they call a pigeon strain, and you can probably see a few tiny black dots on him, but not many. So if you look under his chin, that black stuff is called peppering. And on a bad quality fish, you'll get tons of that. On a good quality pigeon, you may not get any, none, if, any if you're lucky. Um, he's pretty good. Um, these other strains, they won't pepper, so you don't get that problem. But if you're buying a poor quality fish, you'll probably get a ton of peppering. Uh, there's another pigeon there. He's got a couple of specks, but hardly anything. Um, some of the fish I see on the internet covered in it doesn't look nice um, there's not much you can do about it they say it's to do with the decor if you've got a black background or dark gravel um, can make it worse which it can but if you've got a bad fish you've got a bad fish you can't fix that so be careful what you buy I think a lot of people tend to mix strains when they breed and they try to sell the fish on that can lead to genetic problems too so consider the shape consider the size of the eye and consider the size that you're going to buy at. If you want to buy little, it is good fun to watch them grow, but it's quite hard work. Um, and you may not be successful with all of them. So the biggest thing I learned, and I probably wish I had done, is that I would I had bought fish like this, for example. Um, these bigger ones from the start. But I was too scared to spend the money, worrying that I wouldn't be able to keep them. But actually, these are quite easy to keep, I think, as long as you do the basics right. Another key point I didn't mention, the substrate. That's sand. Food can't fall between grains of sand and go mouldy. If you've got big, fat, grainy gravel, food gets stuck, goes off, pollutes the water. There's a thing called whirling disease as well. Um, it's mainly if you feed like muscle mix food, but if that falls in the gravel, goes off, goes rotten and they eat it the toxins can actually affect their nervous system and they'll start spinning around and they rarely recover from that so if you're going to do a substrate of any kind make it sand that's probably a key a key tip don't have gravel um, and I wouldn't recommend a black background if you're going to keep pigeons but then if you've got quality pigeons, your peppering shouldn't be too bad. But that's one way to minimise it, is by having a lighter coloured background. 
Um, in terms of maintaining this, it's actually not that difficult at the moment. I use RO water in here. Um, it's all going to depend on how good your tap water is. If you've got good tap water and you're lucky and it's soft and it's consistent uh, and the nitrates are fairly low, then go for that. Um, if you haven't, and like me, you've got high nitrate tap water that tends to vary, there's all sorts of stuff in my tap water. I use RO and switching to RO was the best thing I did. All my fish keeping problems stopped when I switched to RO water and started using that. So I highly recommend that as one thing um, to make this easier. Tap water just didn't work at all, I don't think. Some people, most breeders will say you can keep them in tap water, which you can, but I think they do much better when they're not in tap water. But that might just be because I've got awful tap water. Another quick thing to mention is the equipment you're gonna need. It's fairly standard stuff, really. Um, obviously the RO stuff's a bit advanced, but once you get used to that, it's not particularly difficult to use. I would always recommend getting the best, biggest filters you can get. Um, the more you spend on those, the better they're gonna be. Uh, the quieter they'll be, the less likely to leak. Though I've had cheap filters before, they were noisy, they didn't last long, they wore out. The seals leaked. Um, I've bought slightly nicer ones recently and they are dead quiet. They are just reliable, easy to use easy to unclip the lids, um, the seals come off properly, they go back on properly, the valves all work. So I highly recommend getting the best filters that you can. Um, heating wise, you can buy the built-in thermostat heaters, they're pretty good, but I tend to find that they vary the temperature quite wildly sometimes from what I've seen, you know, maybe I just had a bad one. Um, but the external thermostats are much better on a dedicated heater. Um, that keeps the temperature quite nice. Um, these guys are on, I think, 29 degrees at the moment. All happy. Obviously, a tank of this size, you need to think about your electric bill too, because 600 watts heating this water all the time, it's not too bad, but it can add up if, you know, budget's a problem. And then, of course, if you're gonna do the, pl the plants, you need good lights. Um, and I think all the new LED stuff's pretty good. They've all got the timers built in. You can fade it, um, no switching it on and off. That's one thing with these is if you dim these lights slightly, they will fly everywhere. Um, and that's another key thing is to make sure that you have a secure lid on your fish tank or you will have one of these end up on the floor. And if you're not around, it will last probably about three minutes before it dies. Um, so definitely have a lid on because these rimless tanks, they look really nice. In fact, I was gonna get one, um, but you'll end up balancing a bit of plastic on the top to try and stop these from jumping because they will. Um, the TV's next to the tank. If I change the channel at the wrong time, they will go flying. These are pretty brave now. You can, they're not really scared of much, but all of a sudden they will go flying off. And that's the other thing about the decor. Spiky branches, um, jaggedy rocks. I would avoid that too because they'll bump into it. I've had two land on the floor. One didn't do so well. One went straight back in and he was fine. So it does happen, um, even though I thought it never would. So yeah, tight fitting lids. If they're gonna crash into something, try not to make it too pointy because they will go mad at some point or other. Um, it probably happens a few times a week in here. And it can be from any reason, from the lights dimmed for whatever reason, um, someone walks past it in the wrong way, or you turn the TV channel over and they'll fly off as well. Funny little things. Um, and then another time you put your hand in, they'll come over and see you. Uh, so yeah, they're a little bit weird, but nice to look at. Look at that one. That's a Penang eruption. He's possibly about six inches long. And I think I bought him when he was about four inches long. So high quality fish, has grown really well, looks really good. No problems at all looking after those, I don't think. You just gotta give them good water on a regular basis and good food. So if you're doing all that right, you shouldn't have too many problems. Um, if you're not overstocked, if you're keeping your wok good, 
if you've got good equipment looking after the water and of course you're giving them good food um, you can't go far wrong I really don't think these are difficult to look after if you're keeping up with those basics feeding wise they get homemade beef heart they'll get some freeze dried black worms occasional blood worm they like a, a mussel now and again um, they go quite mad for that I think vary the diet don't give them the same thing all the time they get a few granules now and again uh, one top tip see this one here he's supposed to be yellow but most granular food and some beef heart has colour enhancers in so they'll make him go red at first I thought I didn't mind that but actually it's a shame now that he is that red and trying to reverse that back I mean he's been off the red food for probably a month and a half and he's still pretty red um, and that's a bit of a shame because he was really nice and the same for that white one he's coming back to white quite quickly that's an albino platinum but he was quite peachy after quite a lot of red food but he's kind of bringing that back so he's kind of reverting but this one really staying quite red um, quite deep red as well so that's a lesson learned avoid coloured food I don't think you need it um, because there's no red food going in here now and he's pretty red and he's a red melon so I don't quite get why they do this with a food um, I don't want to enhance the colour of these fish I want them to be the colour they're supposed to be so yeah it's a shame and I think that's a yellow checkerboard he's looking kind of red too so maybe it's got him as well but yeah as I say no red food anymore they're off the red food um, it's taking a long time to go back to normal but these probably get fed twice a day with a beef heart and one other thing whether that's freeze dried black worm some granules or a mussel um, throughout the day so three times for the feeding quite a lot but despite that the water in here is pretty good um, I think the plants are using the nitrates certainly that lot up there are using the nitrates um, keeping it in pretty good shape and I haven't as I say cleaned this or changed the water now for nine days that's the record I think um, one thing you've got to watch is your pH um, everyone will panic about the pH can I keep them in pH of whatever um, I think the key thing is everyone panics about a pH crash and it seems to me that they're not that bothered by the pH changing. I've watched these go from a pH of 4.9 to 7.5 in a few minutes and they weren't worried at all. Um, I think that the pH, when it gets too low, will cause your filters to have problems. And then when it comes back up, the ammonia will kill the fish. It's not the pH changing that kills the fish, it's the pH killing the bacteria in the filters um, and then the ammonia coming back that kills the fish. So again, don't chase after numbers, don't put chemicals in. If you've got a good tap water, use that. If you haven't, buy something to fix it. So either go down the HMA road or the RO water road. Um, but yeah, if you can give them good water and you can at least keep the key things stable at the temperature and the nitrates low then you're going to do alright and you do have to test your water there's no way you can tell what's going on in here without testing it so buy yourself some test kits and get used to using them and try and do that on a regular basis um, you certainly want to be monitoring what they call the KH level because if that goes to zero then the pH will change a lot and if the pH goes below a certain value, obviously you'll wreck your filters and that can be the end of your fish. So that's a key one to check. A lot of people worry about ammonia, nitrite. Um, if you've got established filters, you shouldn't be having any of that. If you're putting tap water in with chlorine in it, you could kill your bacteria, which might crash your filters. So definitely don't use just tap water. That's the fish keeping basic at least condition it with something or as I say for these 
since these got RO, they've been much, much, much happier. But yeah, I'll try and do some more videos with a bit more detail on some of the specifics. But the basics, don't overstock, feed them well, keep the water clean, and just test those few basic parameters and you'll do all right. Don't be scared to get these, but you are gonna have to spend a bit of money if you wanna do it.